Belt buckle trainer, breaking down a program for a 191 pound client with high blood pressure. Here's what it looks like. Keep showing up. So these last couple weeks of class, we're going to be getting into program analysis, programs that have actually been done on clients, starting off with beginner, and then we're gonna put in some health discovery things that we, we get as the trainer. So if you were to do blood pressure with a client 150 over 95, good, bad, what? 140 over 90 is considered hypertension. Hypertension, too much pressure in the arterial walls. Pressure is great because it gets blood to our brain, but too much, especially, think of arthrosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, think of it like this grass right here, where if you just have a couple little frays, it's not the end of the world, but if you constantly do this, what happens is there's, the plaque buildup is gonna accumulate, and the high blood pressure is essentially doing that. So this is giving us an idea of what's happening with the heart. It's not giving us an idea of what's going into or sticking around the heart. And so that would be a, a blood chemistry profile. You're good. Thank you. So 150 over 95 is pretty high. What are some of the best things to help lower that? Sleep, exercising regularly, medication. There's nothing wrong with medication. We, we look at it and we mock it. Oh, put everyone on pills. If I could take something today and that gets me down to 130 over 80. I like that acutely, but there needs to be a follow-up with it. What does your exercise program look like? So take this as an opportunity to reach out to a medical professional. You got this last week. If I took it, I'm gonna say, who's your doctor? When was the last time you saw him or her? Let's take this as an opportunity to learn about any other contraindications. Now, unfortunately, this is a program that someone designed for their client. And let's dissect it. 10 minutes stretching, very first thing they did. Elliptical 10 minutes. So we're looking at 20 minutes of stretching and warming up. Followed by the first exercise being a squat press. 15 reps. Rest 30 seconds. Go again. Second circuit, bench press 3 by 15. Bench dips 3 by 15. So we're going here. Rest 30 seconds. Box squats into lat pull downs. Now, People will say, they like to criticize online, you can't pick apart a trainer's program. You don't know what's going on. I could tell you, a 191 pound dude with 150 over 95 blood pressure, I can give you a pretty damn good idea of what he wants. And this isn't it right here. This isn't gonna be optimal. Could it help him? Sure. But we want to make it more efficient but safe. And there's a stuff in here that I would classify as not optimally safe. Why are we doing bench dips down here? The synergist for a bench press would be your triceps. Doing an exercise that brings your humerus beyond 70 degrees, not optimal. So why are we doing that? Straight sets here, that would be one of my questions. Why? Why are we doing 10 minutes of stretching and elliptical? What will be some questions that you have going through your minds looking at this? 20 minutes of warming up. Why? Static stretching. Why? Elliptical. Why? Why not have them do it themselves? The idea behind it is static stretching is gonna lengthen muscles. The nervous system controls everything else. That thought process is outdated. If they like stretching, they said, I really like to stretch before my workouts, so be it. I've never in my career had a client who come in and say, I wanna stretch for 10 minutes before I work out. We could be doing superior stretches. That would be more dynamic. Bringing the knee up, bringing it back, different planes of motion. 10 minutes on the elliptical, why not have them do that themselves? What's the value in you as the trainer? 20 minutes out of the 60, a third of the workout is spent doing stuff that they don't really need you. Now, this is the type of trainer that's not gonna keep their client very long, and they're also gonna say things like, oh, you should probably be training with me two to three times a week. Why not train with me six times a week? Learn to negotiate. I was talking or getting some information from my book from Brett Bartholomew, and that's one of the things that he was talking about, the business skills. I don't know of a client who's going to see value doing 20 minutes of a 60 minute session stuff that they could be doing by themselves. This is the common one. People think that by doing compound movements, you're burning more calories, you're going to burn a lot more fat. A squat press gets your heart rate up there. For a 191 pound dude who hasn't worked out in a long time with blood pressure 150 over 90, that's a lot of work. <laughs> 15 reps, wait 30 seconds and do it again for three rounds. It's exhausting. So is that the best choice? I, my question would be, why not modify the squat 
and then rest 30 seconds and then do a press. You're gonna be optimizing those two choices. So do a goblet for, maybe even put a bench right here and you modify the form, 10 reps. So that's, that's cardio right there. And if this person hasn't worked out in years, that's annihilating them 191 pounds. And then you follow up with a seated press next for 10 reps. There's no specific time you need to rest. You rest until you're ready. Ask good questions. How's it going? What's your day looking like tomorrow? What are some trainers you've worked with in the past? What do you like? What don't you like? What's your favorite exercise? Build the rapport there. Rest when you're ready to go. Add weight, goblet a little heavier into a press. Do that for three rounds. So then we have a squat pattern followed by an upper body push. Very economical as well. Second thing, we go into a bench press into a bench dip. I can't think of a reason to do that superset. It's, just, it's, it's kind of lazy. You do the press and then you have them do that. Why not do something that is safer? And if, you're, if you want to do a press, because you did a press here, why not complement it with a row? Or if you want to do another leg variation, you feel like it's appropriate, why not do a bench press into a step up or a bridge? So you're taking an upper lower. There's superior choices here, and that is not one of them. And so I'll do that for three rounds. We could do a squat into a press, a hinge or a unilateral into a press. We don't have much back work. So my mind, when I look at this, are we hitting a push? Are we hitting a pull? Are we doing leg work? If it's a dude, yeah, legs will burn a lot more calories, but I want to make sure I'm hitting at least chest, back, and shoulders. And so when we do a box squat into the lat pull downs, again, I just see that as lazy and you don't really understand programming because truly from a standpoint, explosive stuff should go first. Now for us doing a box squat, that would be fine. We're conditioned. A client who has it and is 191 pounds, my question would be why? Did they come in specifically saying, I want to jump? I doubt it. Is that hard? Absolutely. <laughs> They're going to be taxed. But we can tax them in a more creative way. So we take out the box squat and you do your lap pull downs I'm fine with. There's nothing wrong with them. Maybe it's a better alternative than a pull up or the assisted pull up machine. And then you could add in what do they like? Maybe you want to do a farmer's carry. Maybe you want to do some jump rope. Find out something that they enjoy doing. If they want to get bigger arms, let's do some curls. We could do lap pull downs into curls or lap pull downs into a walk into a curl. And educate in this last circuit because you could optimize this to make it metabolically challenging. So what would be a better workout that we could create for them? With kind of this in mind, you can, you can get an idea that they want to burn a lot of calories. They want to make it challenging, tax the upper body. And then here, like Metcon stuff. You could, you definitely could. I would challenge that and say, I would probably leave this as an, a single jointed exercise first. Yeah curl, tricep extension, just to see how they handle that first circuit. Cool. And so that in my mind, I'm thinking this first circuit should be easy. Can they handle that capacity? And if they can, this next one will be a great time to challenge them on an accessory. So if we're going to stick with the bench press, which I'm for, bench press, all right, bench press. Let's do an antagonistic one or lower body. You choose. What would be a superior here? So seated row. You want to do a row? And that's where you can then, you could do step ups here. Jump. You could do jump here, jump rope, something that they, jumping jacks. Step ups can be used as cardio. I will do it as cardio. We have it as an accessory here. You just load it up to make it appropriate. Just remember that if you do 12 on the left side, you do 12 on the right side, it can be very taxing. I want this one almost to be, in my mind, moderate. And then the last one, that's when you can test them. You do a five, five minute warm up. Here it takes about 12, 15 minutes, rest as needed. 12, 15 minutes, rest as needed. You're looking at about 40, 45 minutes have gone by. You have one circuit left. Going off of this, let's do a leg variation. So you could see how, they, now that's fine. You could incorporate that. If you felt like the step ups they did well on and you felt that it was appropriate to do a reverse lunge here, I'm all for that. The fact that you did the step ups first, you get to make that decision as a trainer. Now for a guy that hasn't done a lot of leg work, squats, step ups, and reverse lunges, just let them know. Probably gonna be pretty damn sore. And especially as a, a lady training a dude, 
If you ask a guy how he's doing for the workout, what will his answer always be? Great. Oh, good. I got more. Yeah, yeah. As he's about to die. <laughs> so observe. Ask questions. If you see face start going white, offer some glucose tablets, something along those lines. Reverse lunge. I would start out maybe by doing eight per side. We have a back. We have a press. We have chest. What would you like to do here? Hinge. Hinge. For the first one, let's not do a hinge if we're doing like a superset because we have a reverse lunge. I'll prefer to see... You could do like a, a farmer's carry, something along those lines. So let's do a carry. And then here you could add in an isolation by try cardio. Maybe you want to do some cardio in there. You could even throw in a game. Make it like a circuit of four. You do reverse lunge into a carry. Comes back, you do a bridge into some cardio. And the cardio can be lower intense. So it's almost like a rest. So modified jumping jacks. We're going back and forth like this. And that's like our rest period. And then when we feel good, we'll get back into the lunges. We'll do the carry. We'll do the modified cardio game. When I say a certain word, you got to go run over to the wall and sit down. And maybe you have a ball and you throw it back and forth. If you want to get some balance involved in there, this would be for a dude who wants to lose weight. You're hitting all the movement patterns. We're not just choosing random exercises. Any questions on why we did this?